Hello, today is the first of a series of videos in our Power AI series. It's where we take advantage of the machine learning and the AI features of Power BI. We'll look at the visuals such as the key influencers and the decomposition tree. We'll look at the natural language capabilities in Q&A and we'll even build our predictive model using AutoML. But that's all for later. Today we're just preparing a famous data set uh, for machine learning to see if it's got any predictive power. We're going to visualize the data as a histogram, as a box and whisker chart, and also as a homemade swarm plot. To do that, we're going to have to create uh, lots of steps to shape the data in the query editor. And we're also going to have to write some calculations in DAX to uh, calculate and standardize the data set. So let's get started. Let's have a look at the data set. The data set is about the detection of cancer in uh, a set of images of cell nuclei. The um, data, if you want to download it and a worked example are on a public OneDrive, which you can see here. The links to that OneDrive are in the comments to the video. If you want to have a look at the original data set link, you've got all the details from the UCI website. Again, the links in the comments below and there's also quite a discussion and of it on Kaggle as well. Let's take a quick look at the data in Excel. Each row represents a sample. There are just under 600 rows. The first column, the ID column, is a unique ID of the sample. The second column is what we'll eventually be trying to predict, the diagnosis, which can be one of two values, M for malignant, which is not good news, and B for benign, which is better news. Then we've got 30 columns, 30 columns of different measurements on the cell type. Those 30 columns actually split into kind of 10 different sorts of measurements, radius, texture, perimeter, area, and so on. And for each of those measurements, there's three summary types. There's the mean of the value for a number of cells. There's the worst case, the kind of usually the maximum value. And there's the standard error, which is kind of indicative of the range. Let's bring that data into Power BI and take a closer look at it. Let's import that data into Power BI. I've launched Power BI Desktop. I'm going to go to the data. It's a CSV file. I'll have a quick look at it here and click on Transform Data to bring it into the Query Editor. These green bars, the column profiling, is useful for our first two columns. We can look at our ID and see that there are 569 rows in total and 569 unique. So we know that's a unique identifier. If we look at the Diagnosis column, we can see there are no missing values and only two values, B and M. Let's go into Power BI Report pane and build our first visual. To do that, I'll simply come on Close and Apply. And that will bring us into the Report pane and we will see the field list on our right hand side here. Let's build our first chart, which is going to be a column chart that shows the distribution of area mean and user's diagnosis on different colors. We'll build it, it'll be very ugly, and then we'll improve on it. So I'm going to create a bar chart. I'll make it somewhat bigger. I'm going to take area mean. It's just one of our numerical variables. It happens to be the first. I'm going to put that on the values. And I'm also going to take that and put it on the axis. On the values, what I'm going to do is going to have a count of because it's we're trying to count the values as a sort of histogram. And finally, I'm going to take diagnosis, put it on the legend, and I will change the colors on the diagnosis so that we have separated colors. So this is our first visualization. It's absolutely terrible. Let's improve on it. To do that, I'm first of all going to create a measure, which is going to be a kind of number of, the number of our instances, which simply is the count rows of our table. There we go. Give it that equal sign. And I'm also going to come along and I'm going to group my area mean. The problem with my area mean is a continuous variable. If I really want it on my axis as a histogram, I need to group it or bin it. So I'm going to come down here to new group. It gives me a dialog box. I'm going to choose 
uh, a round number for my bin size and put it OK and now what I can do is I can create another uh, stacked column chart and I can put my binned values on my axis I could put my number of instances on my values and I can put my diagnostic onto my legend again I can come in and uh, change the colors this gives me a much better view and we can see that this uh, numerical variable has some predictive power the uh, M's are on the higher scale the B's are towards the lower scale there are just 600 rows in this data set so it is possible to think about plotting them all individually not just grouped and we're going to do that in two ways the first way that we're going to do is first of all by creating a new column which I'm going to call diagnosis number I've written the formula here and basically it's going to return a 0 if for B a 1 otherwise for M so we'll create that and we'll see that we've got a new column just under diagnosis called diagnosis number now what we're going to do is going to create a scatter chart and I'll make that slightly bigger and on this scatter chart I'm going to put ID on the details I want a circle or a mark for every observation ID is unique as we remember I'm going to put my diagnosis number on my Y axis and on my X axis I'm going to put my area mean so we get something a bit like this I'm going to actually change around the uh, X and Y that doesn't look good that looks a bit better I will improve it a bit more by coming on to my X axis and setting the start as minus 0.1 and the end as 1.1 because otherwise Power BI cuts everything off at the limits of the data that's our first chart and again we can see that, that there is some predictive values the, um, the ones are slightly higher than the, the zeros. Let's see if we can do even better than that. The chart that we just made suffers from a lot of overplotting so let's see if we can space out those dots by creating yet another column and this one column is going to be called jitter for want of a better word and we're going to simply say that it's going to return us back a random number from each row uh, between 0 and 1. So what we now can do is we can create another scatter plot and we can put jitter onto our x-axis. We can put again ID onto our details. We can put our area mean onto our y-axis and then finally our diagnosis onto our legend and again changing the colors there we go now we've put this chart into focus mode we can see that this is quite a useful chart for seeing the the different distribution of the benign and the malignant and what we can do as well we've just looked at it for one a variable but for example I can take the next variable which is area SE and I can replace it with area mean I'll just make that a sum and so we can see it and we've got uh, an, another analysis of another variable now once we publish the, to this dashboard to Power BI service then unless we give our users access to be able to tweak to the field list then they won't be able to do this so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Q, query editor to reshape the data set into a long data set so that users will be able to do this analysis. I'm in the query editor and I'm going to first of all create a copy of the data set which I'm going to call Wisconsin Long. Then I'm going to put it into a long format. I'm going to select the first two columns and in transform I'm going to unpivot the other columns so it's in a long format. This is what I want now the next two columns I'm going to create are not essential but they're going to be useful when we just want to filter a set of columns so we have a set of columns in a visual so I'm going to come along to attribute I'm going to add a column I'm going to extract the text before delimiter and the delimiter is going to be my underscore I don't need to change my advanced options because it's the first one and what then I get is um, I've grouped them into my 10 different types of measurement I'll call that measurement there. 
I want to do the same again and I'm going to extract but this time I'm going to extract the text after the delimiter and again it's the same underscore delimiter but this time in my advanced options it's from the end of the input and what that will give me is the the free summaries so I'll just put that as summary that's good I can now go back into my report pane and start building my new visual and back in the report pane we can see this new Wisconsin long table with the columns that I've just created and in fact what I want to do is create another column also as before called Jitter with exactly the same definition and there we go we can see now the Jitter column is there let's rebuild that scatter chart I put a scatter chart on my canvas what I'm going to do is put Jitter on my x-axis before I'm going to put my diagnosis on my legend I'm going to put my ID on my details a value on my y-axis and now we have them but we have them for all the uh, attributes so what I'm going to do is come to attributes and put it on my filter pane in my filter card and then I'm going to choose one particular attribute I'll put the single select on I'll change the colors let's make this warm plot a bit more helpful to the user by giving it a dynamic title I'm creating a new measure it's going to be called selected attribute it's using a DAX calculation DAX function called selected value which will return if one value of the attribute column is selected it will return that otherwise it's going to return blank so now that I've created that value that measure there it is selected attribute I can come into the title and instead of having a standard title I'll have a dynamic title and I'll use that selected attribute to make it clearer as well I'll come on and I'll make it uh, a bit bigger 20 point I'll center it and I'll put uh, a background color on it and then if I come along and select one there we are, go so now we can see the selected attribute and the user can simply um, click on a particular attribute and see that so for example this one doesn't seem to have any predictive power all the reds and the blues are interspersed with each other the visuals that we've built so far have only been able to look at one variable at a time and with 30 variables that's a bit laborious so we're going to now get a different chart that can look at several variables I click on the three dots on the palette and I go to get more visuals that brings up a list of custom visuals Microsoft have open sourced the uh, specification of how to build a visual and so many people have built them one is called the box and whisker chart and I'm going to add it to my palette let's click on that and build a chart let's configure our box and whisker chart first of all we'll put summary on the the filters because that will reduce if we put mean there that will reduce it to 10 attributes and not 30 20 is more than enough to show we'll put ID on our axis we want to take every individual uh, row into account value goes on our value column and then diagnosis is on our axis category and then we're going to take our attribute and put that on our second axis right this is what we've got don't worry for the moment about these uh, nine columns to the right let's just concentrate on the leftmost the area mean this shows the range of values of the area mean measurement for uh, benign on the left and malignant on the right and so if we have a look at benign we can see the lowest value is about 143 the highest value is a thousand and the this uh, gray bars here they represent the interquartile range where 50% of the measurements are the circle in the center we can see the mean the uh, numeric mean is 462 and odd and the uh, the boundary between the dark gray and the light gray is the median which is slightly less than that 458 
The fact that these ranges don't overlap significantly suggests that area mean might be a good predictive variable. Our problem is that area mean, the absolute values are so much bigger than the absolute values of the other attributes that they're all kind of collapsed so we can't see the detail of them. To solve that problem, we're going to rescale or standardize our values so that for each attribute, the values have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and then we will be able to compare them side by side. To start that, we need to start with our query editor. We need to create a summary table. For each attribute, we need the mean and the standard deviation. Let's go ahead. First of all, I'm going to create a new table. I'm going to reference this one and call it my summary table. And then I'm going to take attribute and value. Those are the two columns I want, and I'm going to remove the other columns. Then I'm going to kind of do a group by, and I'm going to group by attribute, put advanced on, and I'm going to say that I want the average of the value. I'm going to call that my mean column. And I also want the standard deviation. Now I haven't got the standard deviation there. Let me use max for the moment. And I'll just call it SD and we'll fix that problem later on. So now I've got the summary table, 30 rows, once for each attribute with the mean and not the standard deviation of the max because the user interface couldn't give us the standard deviation. But fortunately, what I can come, I can have a look at the code here and it says list.max. If I come over here and do a list, dot the IntelliSense will give me what I need, standard deviation. There you go. So it's in the code, it's in, there's a function in M even though it's not surfaced with the UI. So once I've done that, now I have got the mean and the actual standard deviation. Let's go back into the report pane. Back in the report pane, and we can see that new table, Wisconsin long summary. Looking at it in the model pane, Power BI has already and very nicely for us put the required relationship in. And what I can do is actually hide this attribute in this table because I don't have already got it in my summary table. And then what I will do now is write a calculated column. I'll come over here and I'm going to go to modeling, new column, and this will be my standardized value. We'll call this new column value standardized. And now we'll write the formula. Let me make it a bit bigger. And what we can say, it's going to be a division. I use the safety fide operator. And it's going to be the, if I go into less the um, related, we have to use related because this is a related table. And this is a less I mean. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide that by our, again, and we have to divide it by our related Wisconsin long summary. Where are you? There's a lot there. Standard deviation. That's quite a formula. Good. Now we have our new column, value standardized. We can simply replace value with it. And now we see, for example, area mean, as we saw before, that's probably a good predictor and so is this one on the right texture mean here but fractal dimension the distributions the ranges look very similar so do the means as well and the interquartile range that is probably not going to be a good predictive variable we've done the hard work of preparing our data in future videos we're going to look at the key insights visual as you can see here to get some good insights into what are the good predictor variables. We're going to incorporate some R code to have a look at this correlation plot here. And we are going to build ourselves a model with AutoML, not just build it, but evaluate it and then run it on new data to predict outcomes. I hope to see you on one of those videos. Thank you for watching.